gender. No. Yeah, and this is why we say tawqifi. Tawqifi means it is established that way in the revelation. So all the prophets spoke of God this way. All the revelations spoke of God that way. After we establish that Allah is mukhalifun al hawadith, doesn't a problem arise when we speak about God and attempt to describe Him with words? Words are used to describe created beings. Is this something we allow because it is minbab al darura to be hul mahlura, or al darurat to be hul mahlurat? Example, humans have ilm and Allah has ilm. And even though Allah's knowledge is utterly different from ours, there is still wajhu shabah uh, in the same word being used. So, very good question. And it's like the question that we just had that how do we refer to God you know, by words like huwa? <clears throat> and, um, you know, that. Again, in the Aqidah, this is something that we will talk about tomorrow, inshallah. We talk about the mutashabihat. We talk about those things in Revelation that speak of God in terms that are similar to human beings and similar to this world. So we talk about the hand of God, the eye of God, uh, in Hadith, you have even the foot of Al Jabbar. We talk about um, the hearts of the believers being between the two fingers of the Most Merciful. Al Rahman al Al Arshistawa, God, the All Merciful, assumed the throne. All of these are verses that are mutashabihat. That means that they are similar to creation. They speak of God in ways that are similar to creation. And uh, our position on that we'll talk about in detail tomorrow, ta'ala. But this is a very important thing. And indeed, um, you know, there is always the problem of language. That the language that we use in speaking about the world that we know, how do we relate that to God? And, uh, you know, the the Arabic language in particular, which is the vehicle of Quranic revelation, this is a language which is perfectly fashioned to speak about God. And in the Aqidah, this is one of the main things that we have to do. That if we talk about seeing God, which we believe in, what does that mean for you and me? And does that, are we speaking of God? like we see the pillars that are here before us in the room, or can it have another meaning? When we speak about the speech of God, the uncreated speech of God, is that letters? Is it sounds? Is it Arabic? Is it Hebrew? Does it have grammar? So here, you know, we understand that the, the knowledge of God, the vision of God, even God seeing creation, these are utterly different than the same attributes that we have by the same names. And yet, these attributes that we have, like speech and knowledge, hearing and seeing, will and power, you know, they are adequate for us to understand these realities and to relate them to the divine. And this is the purpose of theology. It is to be able to enable us using this created language and this language which we usually use to talk about a world that is analogical in a way that is valid regarding God. Um, it's a very good question and it's a very big question. And again in theology we talk about this in a limited way. And we usually define the fact that these words as we use them with regard to God they have meanings that are greater or different than the meanings that they have in, a, in our customary experience. But in reality, there is a, a compatibility here, you know, which is absolutely profound.